Well, good morning to each and every one of you sliding my table down. There we go. All right. And so good morning to each and every one of you. I want to make sure um, I'm able to see the fonts this morning so I can make sure I'm saying my good mornings to you all. All right, there we go. Let me swipe that. All right, so hopefully, I know that it is, um, you know, some inclement weather outside. So um, I've already been wet for the morning. Actually, I got wet twice um, this morning, getting the kids out to the bus stop for 6 o'clock. The rain came down, and... Um, hmm, I got wet <laughs> and then um, came back home with the kids, put the clothes in the dryer <laughs> and then went back out because we would have missed that six o'clock bus. So we went to the, the next bus stop to another bus. And of course, um, they had to get it on that bus and got wet again. <laughs> and so I just came home and I was like, that's it. I'm going to let these clothes here dry on me. So. It is what it is, but to God be the glory for the things he has done and is still doing. Listen here, I want to say this because, you know, for a lot of us, um, we have our moments. We have this like moment, one minute you up, one minute you down, one minute you're in limbo, you're not certain, you you know, you you get to that point where you'll be like, child, God, you just need to speak to me, speak to me, speak, Lord, speak to me. Yeah, you get that moment, you know, I need you to talk to me. Yeah, you get to that moment where you'll be like, okay, God, I need a right now word. I need to know like I know like I know that God, first and foremost, you're with me. I need to know that in spite of everything I'm going through, you are with me. And I think about how um, in, the, in, the, in the Bible, when God called certain people, how, you know, they, they, they wanted to, to deny the calling in, or not, not, not accept the calling. I think of, let's say, for instance, Jeremiah. How God said to him, when you're in your mother's womb, Jeremiah, I knew you. I called you and I ordained you to be a prophet. And, you know, Jeremiah started thinking, going all over the place, how he's young and you know, he has an experience. This isn't what he, what he wanted and what's not. But God knew. And I want you to know this morning, God knows you. God knows you by name, even when you think that mm, he couldn't know me. He doesn't, you know, <laughs> lots of people up there in heaven and lots of people around here who is his children. But I know he know me. But I want you to know, yes, he does know you. He knows you by name. And I want you to also know that God is not slack concerning his promises. But you know what the problem is? Our level of faith. Our level in trusting him and believing in him. You making any tea? Make some tea. Make some tea. Yeah. And um, and uh, cappuccino would be even better. But I know you're not going to want to do that. Yeah, make the tea then. <laughs> I wish you all could see the look that I just got. Like, oh, you need any cappuccino? You need any cappuccino? Um, that's the look I just got. Yeah. You know, cause I'm just not doing all them sugars. Um, and so I came off the carnivore diet, um, that I was on. Um, I didn't have any, um, side effects from it. I thought it is, it was excellent for me because I love meat. I can eat meat and, you know, the only thing, um, after, um, being on the, the diet is that I noticed that when I, when I came off, like as I started to 
add um, vegetables to my diet. Like I would have like cramps in my stomach and um, I noticed that when I came off the diet that, okay, certain vegetables just was not working for me. So I started like um, with the, with, with the um, cauliflower. And so I added cauliflower and meat. Um, then the next day I did um, salad. I didn't have any kind of any problems with the salad. And that's just like, a, I, I'd made a Caesar salad. And I didn't have any issues with that. And then I went to adding in the, the broccoli and the carrots and the cauliflower. Stomach cramps start up again. And um, then I tried another thing. I went to um, just adding vegetables, daily vegetables. I did one day, I did string beans. And listen here, that was by far the worst experience. And so... <laughs> Then I went back on to just eating the meat because like I said, when I ate the meat, here's what, here's what, 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 what happened. When I started the carnivore diet, I noticed within two, the second and the third day that when I woke up, I was very alert. And when I say very alert, I talking about normally I'm the type of person that I get up at five o'clock in the morning and I'm up. But like my brain takes, you know, like I, I, I still feel a little, I still moving a little slow. And so I would then go ahead and make me some coffee because coffee is going to give me that adrenaline rush to the bing, bong, bing, bong, bing, bong. Time to get in the school yard, time to get in the car, time to, yeah, that gives me that, that rush. And then I'm, I'm really up. And then like, um, so if you ask me like a question and I have to, you know, give you the answer. I may ponder, I might get it to you, but it's just going to take longer. But after coffee, I'll be like, bang, I got it. Um, but here's what I noticed on the carnivore diet. I, because I didn't drink any coffee on the, on the carnivore diet. I just had water, um, water, lemon tea, a regular tea, any kind of tea, just no sugar, no. Um, um, and then I noticed that I would get up in the mornings and my brain would be like, kapow, I'm already there. I'm up and I am all, I mean, you can give me the hottest of math and I could do it. And so I love that. What I also noticed with the carnivore diet is that I had lots and lots of energy. I talking about unbelievable um, energy. I didn't feel slowful, sluggish, none of that stuff, you know, I'm like, Oh, now, um, since I've had surgeries, you know, um, I had like pain, I, my body would have pain, but on the carnivore diet. Now, let me tell you all this. And this is for people I talking about joint aches and bone pains. and Oh Lord. When I, after the third day on the diet, because I hadn't noticed it, you know, the second day, you know, I didn't pay any mind to it, but by the third day of this carnivore diet, I noticed I was able to like, I normally, my daughter would like help me, you know, with, 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 with my legs, you know, giving me, helping me just, just go on machines and, you know, massage and all this other stuff. Well, listen here, by the third day, I noticed I moved my leg, nobody, nobody helping me, nothing had to, I mean, I had no kind of, 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 oh, I know, I know, I was, I know what I was doing. I was trying, okay, so I was getting out of the bed and I had, I had fell into a manhole and messed up my right leg ankle. And so I would like, every time I put my feet down on that, um, it would be so excruciating, you know, that I would hop right back up off that leg and then I'd be like, really, um, you know, and, you know, I didn't have to check that this is a very bad sprain. And then, you know, let me tell you all this. Every time I started to get well on this leg and I'm working out or whatever, I would fall or I would, 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 would trip and twist it. And guess which leg it turns out is that same side of the same leg, same place. So I came to, thank you. So I came to the conclusion, this devil trying to take my ankle and mess this up and I bind it and blah, blah, blah. Well, anyhow, so on the carnivore diet, I got up one morning and I just put my feet down and I was like, oh, I just was really stunned. And I started like, 
walking around on the leg. I ain't got no ankle brace on that particular leg. And I'm like, hmm, I don't feel the pain. So I noticed that inflammation plays a really big part, y'all. Inflammation. Inflammation plays a very big part in, in these joint and bone and muscle pains and all that, man, because it's, it's really a been a lot. And so within the first week, I also noticed that my clothes just like just dropping off. Like, hmm. So I went on the, before the carnivore diet, I went on the scale. And then must be about four days in the carnivore diet, I went on the scale. And I was shocked. I was, what, the, the, the scale shocked me. So then I got my son. And I said, come here, come here, come here, come here. I need you to go on the scale. <laughs> and he went on the scale and it read his weight. And so then I gone back on the scale. It, I was shocked again. So then I was like, man, this can't be. That's impossible. This is impossible. And then I went again, um, got somebody else on the scale, my, my grandson or my daughter. I can't remember who I put on the scale. And then their weight we showed up. And then I went back on the scale and sure enough, I had lost a lot, a lot of weight within that four day, like extreme. Like I was like, something could not, that kid just could not be right, but it was right. And, um, so then I noticed that I felt very full. I started calling up everybody and my mama too, but my mom is deceased, but I called my sister and I was on, um, my daughter, I think was talking to my sister on a video chat and I just happened to be in the kitchen and it was like, who that is? And so she said, that's mommy. Oh, who that is right there in that background. That's mommy. So when I came into the camera, my eyes was like, wow, what? You lost a lot of weight. what you do? So I was like, yeah, I, I was thinking the same thing. I, I mean, I'm on this carnivore diet. What's the carnivore diet? Well, I was like, well, is this diet where you just eat protein? Um, you could eat anything that flies in the air. <laughs> and then I was like, and then you could eat anything that's in the ocean, you know, feet, I mean, you know, fish, whatever, you know, shrimp, whatever, conch, all that. Um, and then you can eat anything that that's on the land, you know, because it's it's a, it's a protein diet. So, um, and I was like, so she said, so tell me exactly what you eat. And then the next thing I know was, um, I called my sister in law, who who's at some point gonna see this, and um, I was I started like doing exercise like a ballerina. You hear me? I was like, it feels so good to be able to lift my leg this high with no pain, and um. Yeah, and so um, she um she's like, okay, just 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 give me the full menu of everything you put in your mouth. <laughs> Everybody was like, just tell me what you put in your mouth. Then I called um a bishop friend of mine, another pastor friend of mine. Then I called a friend of mine. I I called um I just started calling everybody who I know who got little weight issues. You know what I mean? And just as a just as a because I found it so remarkable that. So many of the symptoms that I was having just within the time that I had been on the diet just dissipated. I mean, it just disappeared, literally disappeared. And I was like, this is impossible. This is just impossible. And to sleep, wake up, and no pain, no excruciating pain. Because, you know, one of the things that after doing long term radiation, which is what I had. Um, I had done outward radiation um, for a long period of time, and then they did the inward radiation um, for a period of time as well. And so these side effects, you know, they give you these lists of these things, you know, bone pains and um, deterioration of this and all these, listen, I had all of them things. I, I started out with some of them things. So it only magnified the rest of them things. And so 
I was like, Lord, this body. So I stayed with a leave in my bag. I stayed with um, ibuprofen. I would, I would stay, I, you know, I can't take that and all, but um, um, I stayed with, with painkiller just in case I, you know, the pain to strike up. And one thing I, I'm not a person who just pop a pill, pop a pill. I'm a person who the pain got to be 10 out of 10. And just been like that for a while before I just said, I said, I can't, I can't do it no more. Um, I have to take something. I'm not somebody who, if I only feel in four to six to eight, they'll sit there and say, oh, let me get a painkiller just to be comfortable. No, I'm not like that. I really have a very high tolerance um, to pain. But anyhow, um, this diet, the carnivore diet, it started to... Um, I, I noticed even my breathing, my breathing, um, would be like, I mean, I, all that sinus and congestion, everybody that knows me know I'll do that. Yeah. Sinus. I've had that from since I was a child. So everybody knew I'll be like, mm -mm, that was my sinus. But I noticed on the carnivore diet, I guess maybe because there's no dairy, um, no kind of, um, well, dairy, milk, cheese, eggs, none of that was in my diet. Well, actually I had eggs because I would have eggs and bacon or egg and steak, eggs and pork chops. Mm, all that sound good, making me want to go cook it right now. <laughs> no, but um, I noticed that uh, I wasn't having all those, those, those issues. And then um, the carnivore diet, you know, can cause constipation even in that. I mean, that was not an issue for me. Um, and then, but when I began to eat the vegetables coming off of the diet, I noticed that that became like a little issue. And so then I had to do the warm water and lemon um, first, first thing in the morning, hot water and lemon and let it get warm and then drink it all down. And that helps, that, 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 that does wonders. But um, needless to say, this carnivore diet, I felt amazing. My body felt like I was 19 again. I was able, I told my daughter, I keep this up. I'll be able to could run in the teacher's parents race at my kid's school. She would need to go and be in my slot, you know, because I'd said to her after gaining weight, I would said to my um, daughter, I said, now let me tell you all right now. When y'all was small, I ran every race with St. John's. I did it at Faith Temple. I did it at St. John's. I did it at Charles W. Saunders. I said, now it's time for me to pass this baton to your generation. If you hear them call on parent-teacher race, you best try hard. Go stand there for your brother and your nephew. You best be me. <laughs> and you better win. Because at least when I used to do it, you know, I, I you know your girl, you, I used to get a sprint from St. John's. But anyhow, um, kind of a diet was amazing. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to um, not use it in the future, but I would like to um, enhance it a little. So like now I'm trying to, and I'm definitely not doing the rice and the pasta and all that other stuff because I find that they contribute to this inflammation, man. That inflammation situation is just beyond. Um, but I found that when I'm just eating the meat, whether it's the fish, whether it's um, crab legs, whether it's whatever, just, just meat, sausage, you know, the Louisiana good spicy sausage, all that. I don't have, I don't have any, 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 I, I, I just feel so good. I noticed that it also cleared up my skin. Not that I ever had facial skin issues. You know, I don't have acne and things like that. But I noticed that um, the energy was just remarkable. So since I've been back off this night, put on a little couple pounds, couple of that, what I lost back. And I was like, no, child, the same weight that. Uh, the same way that, and that's some same cakes, Mama Lily. <laughs> had to been sampling to make sure, I to, uh, because LaShawn wasn't here. And I'm like, oh, I got to cut this cake. Just taste a little piece. And I mean, it tastes be like, mm, that's good. You know, y'all just do it with the weed. But anyhow, um, the carnivore. This morning, I want y'all to know.
you know, if you have issues, I'm no licensed doctor at all. I'm no doctor, not professing any kind of um, medical um, advice here. I'm just saying what worked and helped me. Now, I want to show y'all something. This is the, this is, this is me. I'm not holding anything in. If you notice, when I get back on my diet, if you look at a couple of videos of me, less than maybe a week or two, maybe a couple of days ago, you'd have noticed that this area here was getting back bloaty. That's because I was back on all them vegetables and doing stuff, right? But I went back to trying to eat back like how I used to eat and see. This goes back down. I don't know if you can see it. But this goes back down. And if I step further away, which I'm going to do here, you'll see. And I'm going to stretch my hand out. You will see that this weight thing fluctuates within days of just following the diet, following the plan. This changes. I ain't got on no um. What you call that? I can't raise up. I'm, I'm a woman of God. I'm not going to show nothing up underneath here. But I don't have one no um, spandex or um, we call that them, them, them thing with them girls to strap around them to make this look small. This is just me. So this is what happens when I stick to this diet. Everything comes off. Now, I said for my birthday, which is in November this year, I've got to get, i got to get back down. You know, my daughter just said, this is going to lose all the low facial fat. After a while, um, this here goes, the, the, the face lemons. So here's what I'm, I'm just saying to you guys, because, you know, it just works for me. And I can tell you all right now, I love bread. Love. Can I say it again? La, 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 la. La, 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 la. Love, 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 love bread. So, yeah, that's me. I love bread. Um, I love cake. This, let's just let's, let's just round this off because we're gonna start off with all I like and love. Let's just say I'm a connoisseur for desserts. <laughs> and um that's not good. Because as we get older, um, certain diseases present itself. And, you know, I, nobody in my family is no diabetic. And we, I, I'm sure not, not going to be the first one. If anything, I'm a um, chain breaker. I don't, um, I don't, um, I don't want to be the person to, to um, inherit or better yet, stop a sickness in my line. So I have, I'm watching what I eat, watch my salt intake watch um my sugar intake with the carnivore diet i wasn't doing no sugar so when i started the sugar um for my daughter's birthday cake what i what i made you see the peach cake on my wall when i when she, and guess what she cut me the first slice of cake she gave me the first slice of cake i've never gotten not that i, I shouldn't say I'd never but i just don't remember ever getting the first slice of cake and she's 26. um but I don't remember. She says she did, but I just don't remember. But she gave me the first slice of cake. And so I was like, oh, Lord, this cake. I mean, this diet. I'm a kind of a diet. You know, I can't eat no cake. But then she gave me the cake. And so I was like, okay, I'll make the exception because I knew she, you know. So plus guests was here at the house. So I was like, I'll tell you what I'll do. I got four, four, um, three forks and I sticked it into the cake and I shared my cake with two other persons. And I offered it to the fourth person, but she didn't. She was like, mm, she don't want no cake. And, um, you know, I taste the cake. Bear in mind, I hadn't had sugar um, from when I started the diet in June. When I started kind of on June, right? Or was it August? No, it couldn't have been August. Anyway, yeah, so June. Um, um, June or July. We can't, we, I can't remember when we started the diet, although I could track it back in my phone. I had not sugar for uh, quite some time. So when I tasted that, oh, I was like, ooh, this thing's sweet. Oh, this is really sweet. And so I was like, hmm, 
Now everybody tasting the cake was like, oh my God, this is, oh my God, this is so good. And I'm like, oh my God, this thing is sugar. And they was like, nope, this is just right. Everything is just right about this cake. So I was telling a friend, so she said, well, you got to realize you haven't been on no sugar. So that would have, anything you, you would have tasted would have seemed extreme. And so um, that's when I started to say, okay, let me, um, let me, you know, I did that cheat. And then two days later, I made a guava da. Big guava da. And I didn't eat any of it. Um, I said to my daughter, I'm going to cut me four slices so that when I come off this diet now, it will be in my freezer for me to have <laughs> when I come off the carnivore diet. But it's not going to be no time soon, so let me just put this up. Let me put this up, and I ended up giving it to somebody. Anyhow, um, but while I was on this diet, um, I just never felt so good. And I... I was like, now see, I could I could look to my my old age if my body's gonna feel like this. I can embrace being 50 if my body is gonna feel like this because inside all my organs just felt I can't begin. Like it was just everything was great. And so I was like, okay, yeah, mm-hmm, this, 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 this. So now, you know, having been off the diet for about three weeks now, I've been, you know, piecing up here, piecing up here, piecing up there, adding different things to it. I'm like, I've not gotten back to the point where I'm slopeful and not um, um, coherent and stuff like that. But I still, I, I haven't gotten that feeling like how I felt when I was actually on the diet that that body inside could take on the word when you see I, when I was on the, the carnivore diet I did aerobics for one hour and 30 minutes straight and at no point was I doing this because <sighs> let me show you something with all the weight that I had gained I climb up some stairs and I'd be like hold it hold it hold it <sighs> because that's what happened and like you'd be like oh my god i can't get upstairs oh my jesus and help me help me lord but um i didn't have that and i still could climb stairs no issues now but i don't want to get back all that weight that i lost i don't want to put that back on so like I told you, if you look at, at, at just me a couple of days ago, you'll see that even like my stomach area was just, you know, bloaty and getting up there. And I was like, Mm-mm. after I re-looked at my video, I was like, oh my God, the gut has got to go. I got to get rid of that. Mm-mm. Let me get back to my, 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 my way of eating. Let me share something. And here's why I'm, I'm going this route with everybody today, because this body does not belong to us. This body is the temple of the Lord. And I started to look at this temple. You hear me? And I got so convicted because I said, child, Lord, yeah, you would give me high marks in in areas, but if we have to come back to this temple as a grade, then I'm not going to (laughs) pass because I have not kept this temple I've not been eating the way I should be eating. Yeah, okay, you're not fornicating, committing adultery, none of those things. Yeah, that's fine, not doing it. But overeating, overeating can lead to great obesity. And I'm someone who has um, taken um, pain and subsidized the pain with food. And I would binge on my favorite Cheetos, spicy Cheetos, or the spicy fries. Ooh, don't bring no spicy fries. I'd buy me two big bags of them and sit there and just eat that. And I would buy ice cream and just eat that. And the more people would say, oh, you gained some weight, eh? you gained some weight, child. I just going to go get that gal and put that in the front of me like this. Get my spoon and just be like, mm, child, I gotta lose this weight. 
and transparency. My ministry is all about being transparent, helping people. Because one thing I've learned is that if somebody doesn't be truthful and tell you um, things that they have battled with or what they've overcome or what they're still in the process of overcoming, you won't get to the point where you see what you're doing and how you're eating yourself, but you're eating and you're going to get sick later on. Sugar will come. Hypertension will come. Even the greatest of fitness people still just die, just, just up and die. Yeah, that's that we understand that's how life can be at times. But we have to be accountable. We have to be good stewards. And there's no way we're gonna let food destroy us. Um, those of you that know me know I used to love to tell you if you love it, let it kill you. Because there are some people who head in destruction. You warn them, run, don't go that way, turn, turn, keep, and they keep running in that direction because that is what their flesh wants. That is what they want. And so nothing you can tell them, they're going to change your mind. And then you just have to make up your mind. Look, let them go. Let them, if they love it that bad, let them, let it just, let it go. But we want to be positive and we want to get others. I want people to see the starting process because I don't want when y'all see me back small for the all of them start the woman's child pastor Lily oh my god she oh girl you see all that weight she just dropped oh my god I heard she's sick I heard this I heard that I'm telling y'all now that I have decided to be accountable for this temple that house the Holy Spirit in it and I want, by all means, those of you, whether y'all want to admit this, you know, because I'm sure I'm going to get some inboxes telling me, girl, how you could go on social media and put that out there about your weight and all this other stuff, because I want other people to get delivered. I want other people to understand that there are reasons sometimes behind people's obesity. There are, so you can't just be, um, not sensitive to the to the situation. There are issues, there are underlining issues. Sometimes it's heredity, it's a gene. You check it, everyone's fat in the family. From birth, they grow, they, they come with these huge weight issues coming out of the belly, 10 pounds, 12 pounds. And then they eat, and, you, know, you understand, so you don't even know what it is. Um, they, they may, you know, have genetic disorder with fat, um, fat cells, uh, you know, growing insurmountable. We don't know. But for those of you that are slim and got the Coca-Cola shape, because I was once there too. And I can tell y'all that here's what triggered this, 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 all of this. When I was the diva, Cookie, oh, no, no. I call it up. I had uh, LaShawn. Can you bring me one of my um um diva photos off my um by my mirror? I'm gonna show y'all something for those of you that don't know me because some of you are gonna see this on Facebook and you won't have any ideas as to um who I am or what I looked like before. But I want to show y'all something, and I want to say I want to say, but when I, she's gonna get that photo. But when I looked like this. Right, and I'm talking about long flowing hair. Those of you that know me know I always long hair, natural long hair on my own long hair, no extensions. Um, when I had the shape, when I had the hair, when I had whatever, all the things that come with the worldly stuff. Um, when I was into the brand name bags, and I had to have the brand name. Um, shoes and the Rolex and all those different things, right? When I had all them things. Um, Carno, living, and, and, and that's just, that's the way I was before I knew God. And there is nothing wrong with you if you're slim and you, you into all those things, that's, that's fine. That's, that's, that's how you, that's your life. 
But when I was into all those things and I looked this particular way, um, I had relationship, it's like people who dated me cheated on me. So here we go. So there I am. And you see, and nobody's going to believe that's not, is that that's my hair, but everybody who really knows me, you know, that's my hair. All of it is my hair. Hold on, am I in my thing? It's me. Somebody said, good God. And everybody also know that I loved big earrings. So hopefully you can see that with me moving around. Let's see, let's see, hold it still. Let me see. Try to put it up close. All right, well, that's the best I could do right there. So this is me. Um, I had already had a baby. And I was already back down small. Yeah. And even when I had my um, second daughter, I went up to 164 pounds and I dropped all that off and went back down small. I was a gym guru, all into the gym, all into my shape and all that other stuff. But um, when you have somebody that you're dating, keep cheating and you're married and they're cheating, you know, it gets you to the point where you'd be like, good God. And then, and let me tell y'all right now, when you see, huh? can I say this again? <laughs> when you see the so-called competition, You'll be like this. Give us something to drink. <laughs> You'll say, um, I need to just, just, just calm down right now. Let me sip some tea. Mm. So you'll say, this is what you would have said. Um, because you'd look at them and you'd look at yourself and then you'd look at them and you'd be like, oh my God, this is what, this is what they want over. Mm. What does this say? And so, you know, um, I'm not. I'm not attacking anybody in the past. I'm just saying that, you know, things happen for whatever reason. Um, but that's, that's the first hole right there. That was the first wall, the layer. That was the first layer. And then, of course, other issues came on. And then here you are. And then, of course, when I did treatments, I also did, I had to do steroidal they did steroidal um, treatments that also finished blow up the fan. But now I'm off of all of that. And now it's time to become completely whole. Completely whole means mentally, physically, you got to do it. And then um, emotionally. Because mental is all in the mind, but emotions are what you start to blurt out and have those spurts. There are some of you who are going to listen to this, who are going to hear it. You got to deal with the core. So, um, LaShawn, one more thing. Can you get me one onion out the fridge, please? I want to show you all something. So, like the core. You've got to remove the layers. And this is your word this morning. How do I remove the layers? Because for me, the weight was my protection from the pain. For me, the weight was my comfort zone. And even now, the wait is still a, a moment where I say, yeah, you don't fool up with me. I will sit, right? I will sit on you. Because I'd be thinking, yeah, I'm heavy now. And imagine me sitting on you. You're going to come move. <laughs> but um, it's layers. I need a knife, though. Hey, please, this is the last time. Because um, I should have had this, but this just came in my head, so... This just came in my head, so I just have to show it the way I'm getting it. And so you're so helpful. So if you notice, this is an onion, an onion. Every Bahamian know what onion is because we cook it and we use it just in every, but everything. It's in our rice. It's in our macaroni. It's in our kung fritters and it's in our kung salad. And let me tell you something. Those people that love onions will tell you, cut up onions and put it on top of their crack kung with onions be like mm. but anyway so this is the onion you notice something about this onion 
a whole side of little peak here. This onion has a brown thing around it. Yeah, I mean, look at that. It's a layer. A layer. And layer. And more layers. I wonder what layer you got on you. Maybe you're in a domestic violence situation and you covering it all up with makeup. Oh, that's your layer. That's the layer you put on. See, I'm peeling it off now so you can hear noise. That's your layer. And this is me just showing this with the knife now. Um, this the onion. The thing which you need to use is on the inside of all of this. That's the onion is on the inside. These are the things we just discarded. See this here, we discard these. I'll throw it down. And layers on this is protecting the actual onion inside, the vegetable inside, because it's white. Some come in purple, but this one is white. And when you open this up, Two things are gonna happen. Number one, before you could even cut it open good, depending on um, the onion, you're gonna find your eyes burning, burning, make you run tears. Now, if you are, if you've been doing this for a while, cutting onions like I have, because from since I was seven. Eight, maybe both. Definitely, by the time I was nine, I was already cutting up onions, um, helping my sister in the, in the kitchen, gratering um, cheese, beaten eggs, and cutting up, chopping up onions, whether it's for the potato salad or for the macaroni or for the rice. That's I used to have to cut up those things, so I, I've been cutting onions for a while. Um, but there are ways now I could cut this that I don't have, I don't, I don't, my eyes don't even run water no more, cutting onions. But um, I'm wondering this morning, who's got layers listening? Maybe you got layer marital problems and you, 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 you denying it. You ain't happy. Maybe you got another layer. Ooh, boy, you could tell some lies. <laughs> People, everybody who know you know you. Know you like to lie. Maybe you got another layer. Hmm? You can't stop yourself from fornicating. You go from pillar to post. I'm wondering what your layer is. Because we got to get to the core of the problem to fix it. We've got to get to the core. And so if I took this, and those of you, I'm just cut this open. All right, I'm cutting this open for you to see. Cutting this onion open, look at it. Even inside the onion, what do you see? Can you see it? It has layers, layers of the onion. This onion is, let me see, I'm trying to see how I can hold this. There you go. You see that there? That's a layer. That's a layer. These are layers inside. Now, what's eating at you? What are you hiding? What are you not wanting anyone to know? A drug addiction? Alcohol addiction? What are you hiding? Because God wants to free us. God wants us to be healthy, whole, and strong. He says, I wish above all things that even as your soul prosper, even as you, even as you begin to see how good God is, He wants us healthy, mind, body, and soul. And this is why you can't just sit there and let time pass, and you're in the same situation. This is why you can't just sit here, act like it's good, peachy queen. Blessed the Lord and highly favored prophetess. But when you get off the call, you blow up all in bed, crying, depressed, battling with depression. There are things you can do. Do you know, if you look at case studies, 
there are people in different places committing suicide and we have all these suicide interventions and prevention. We have all sorts of things. But you know what happened? We got the help. We got we have people who can help. But here's the problem. The people who need it don't seek it out. Sometimes it's because they're too prideful. They don't want everybody to know. Well, I don't want everybody to know my business. I don't want everybody to know. But here's what you do know. When you get delivered, mm, when you get set free, when you are not battling the situation and you have overcome it, baby, I don't care who tell it. I have my own story to tell. You don't need to tell nobody Prophetess Lily had cancer. She can get on social media and she can tell her story. She can also say there's no trace of having it. There's no trace of the disease. And here's the medical records to prove it. Hmm? She can get up there. I can get out here and tell my own story. I'm challenging you. What's your story? Hmm? What's your story? Because let me tell you something. Plenty of people act like they got it together. Hmm? Act like it's all together lovely. All together good. So they ain't happy. They ain't get no help. I want you this morning. I dare you this morning to be blind Bartimaeus. I double dare you this morning to instead Staying blind, hmm? instead of staying blind, and you hear the person that could heal you is coming. He's coming. He's coming closer because the crowd is so thick you can feel. And you know when God is in the midst of something because you can feel all the, what we used to say, the little spider senses. No, that's the anointing of God letting you know. Hear me. Because Jesus is coming. And you know what that blind man does? Because he can't see. His eyes are closed. Been like that from birth. He says, what's going on? Hmm? What's happening? Hey, I hear the crowd. I hear the crowd. And the crowd, the people say, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. The, the great healer? Hmm? The, the, the deliverer? That's who passing? They say, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. That man is blind. But you know what he says? I can't see him. I can only hear. I can walk. I got all of my other senses. Hmm? I could touch. If he came close, I'd be able to touch him. I could taste, but come on. I, I, I don't see him. He begins to cry out. Jesus. Thou son of David, just have mercy on me. Hmm? He can't see. And he's saying it, and the crowd is telling him, hush, man, hush. I'm trying to hear what he's saying. Hush, hush. Jesus of Nazareth is passing back. Jesus, thou son of David, oh, have mercy on me. On me. He can't see. He's holding his eyes and he can't see, he can't see. And he shouts with the loudest of shouts, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And immediately Jesus stops. Let me tell y'all something. When you get sick and tired of what is eating away at you, you're going to stop. When you, young woman, 
get tired of laying in bed with married men, you will stop. When you home wrecker decide this just ain't worth it, he may be paying your bills, but this just isn't worth it because you want someone for yourself, you will stop. Hmm? You will do what it takes to get God's attention. Like the blind man who knew man can't help him. Doctors, nothing, nothing can help him. He shouts. I dare you this morning to shout. I dare you, pastor, prophets, to shout. You want people coming to your church? Start doing things different. Seek the Lord. Get back into prayer. Stop all this coming online and just begging people for money and saying this Psalm 31. God says, so see that this and do. Listen, stop all this. Get to the point where you begin to seek God for yourself. Because let me tell you something, when your gift makes room for you, but it never say you have to get up here and beg. Never, never. God takes care of his own. And when you're doing God's assignment, I trust you. Jesus said, when you go into their house, if they receive you, go in. But when they don't receive you, just dust your feet, move on. I want to say to you, when you get tired and you realize that, look, drinking, having this and having that, um, whiskey, well, I don't think nobody's drinking whiskey, but I'm just saying brandy, um, whatever the drink is of today, Ricardi, whatever it is, whatever the, the, the drink y'all is using on the disco. Back in my day, it used to be Alizé and, and Dawn Perry on. Hmm? You had to have a, a bottle of Dawn to the table. I'm saying to you, when you get tired and you realize, look, sitting up in this disco and partying and thinking, I ain't getting nothing of this other than wear and tear on my body, you'll stop. When you come to the conclusion that this is not working, when you're tired of putting on all kinds of makeup, hiding all these black eye, blue eye, your eye, my eye, hmm? you'll say, that's it. I go straight to the police and I press and charges. Because it takes a whole lot to come to the conclusion of stopping. When you get tired of all the illnesses that's plaguing your body and the doctor don't tell you, um, madam, you, we gotta, we, you gotta lose some weight. The doctor telling you this now. You keep going, doc, oh Lord, doc, my back, I gotta get a shot in my back, I gotta get the thing in my leg, I gotta get in my pull. I gotta do all of this, doctor, and the doctor saying, lose some weight. I need you to lose some weight. Because this, 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 this is where the pressure is coming from. This is really the problem. And he giving you prescription, he giving you medicine, but he's also telling you lose the weight. You know what you can do? You will lose the weight. You will stop. What is it going to take for you to realize your body is the temple of the Lord? This ain't yours. You are borrowing. You are borrowing. Because when God is ready, just how we came into this world, we're going out. We came in naked. And guess what? When it's all said and done, this body rots in the grave. And woe if they, they cremate you. Because then it's ashes. They sprinkle. I want to encourage you this morning to get out the rut. Stop blaming everybody for your problems. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Stop and tell God, thank you. Because when you think you got it bad, oh my goodness. Great God from Zion, when you think you got it bad, you ain't got to look that far. Turn right to the left, or look right to the right. Better yet, look right what's in front of you, because somebody has it worse. The old people used to say you jump out the pot, but great God from Zion, <laughs> you're lying in the frying pan. That's worse. Hmm? The pot got water, frying pan, stall and peel it. Oh my goodness. Sizzles. 
They say, boy, we got to do things different. God, I ain't got no money. Lord, I need money. I need you to bless me, Jesus. Go work. Hmm? Go work. By the sweat of your brow, go work. Get a job. Open up your own business. Use your hand. Creativity in them. Nobody's just going to keep giving you arms. They say, teach a man to fish is better than you just feeding him, you know. Because you're at least giving him the tools so he can get out there and survive. I'm giving you a survival mode now. Don't die prematurely from overeating. Don't you die prematurely from staying in a situation that you know isn't good for you. It takes a lot to swallow and say, look, this is not working. This morning, I jumped in one car. Click, battery dead. I did like this, battery dead. Jump out the other car, tick, 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 boom, that starts. So I was able to get get the boys off to the little um, bus stop. Pack back, call my mechanic, come fix this, because it's not working. You don't get it, it's not working. You don't get paid, it's not working, come fix it. Yeah, I come in. Let me tell y'all something. This is the season we are in. Putting on the mask, putting on all of the, the regalias and polishing up so well and acting like it's glitter and glam. Pastoring is glitter and glam. Mm -mm. If you're a real pastor, you know it takes work because you're on call all hours of the night with your members. Someone gets sick and you're on the hospital, you, they want you to come. And guess what? If you're a pastor, you're going to go. You are really a pastor. You are going to go. You're not going to say, they don't tie in my church. They don't do this. They don't do that. I ain't going up there. Mm -mm, you're still going to show up. Hear me, saints of God. It's time now to just stop. Pursue the things of God. Love the Lord with all our heart, soul, and might. This is a time to really love on ourselves. By doing that, you're going to take care of this. Someone is watching. You are this close to a dialysis machine. This close. And you know why? Because you won't drink water. Oh, I don't like how water tastes. I don't like how water tastes, water that. Well, you ain't gonna like how the dialysis feel. You know what I mean? You ain't gonna want, because everybody who I know who have it not to go and go do these things, they be complaining about the pain or whatever. So I, I, I'm not I'm not a patient. I'm never gonna be a patient, but I'm telling you, drink water, man. Change your diet. Add more water. It's a necessity. Let's do things that will benefit us in the long run. Let's start to live life more abundantly. Let's pursue God, but let's also look at our individual selves and where the problem is, fix it. It's ain't no time looking at everybody else's trauma, everybody else's flaw and pointing it out. This is time to see that you, the reflection in the mirror, and work on yourself to thine own self be true. So, I came on this morning to encourage you to stand and believe, but get rid of the layers. My layer is every day opening up to my 
past, present, and future. Because I want to do what? Be so transparent. Like I say, nobody got to tell my story. I'm bold enough. I'm woman enough to do it all by myself. And let me share this with you before I go. I'm not looking for her to return. And here's where I'm going to close. I'm not looking for her to return. Because as I got older, I learned a few things about her that I just didn't like. She was very proud, but she made people that didn't look like her feel really bad. I have a schoolmate that years ago I ran into at a bamboo shack. I couldn't remember her name. But I do remember the fact that she and I went to SJC together. And so I said to the young lady, hey, schoolie, she was just in front of me. And she was placing her order and I was standing behind her. And I said to that classmate, that schoolmate, I said, hey, schoolie, I'm going to buy you a meal. With whatever you're ordering for whoever, I'm, I'm going to take care of it under the bill. And that girl turned around and cussed me out like a dog. And I was shocked. Because there I was in my clergy attire. I was riding with my sister. I was at my church. And I had on my black and white clergy. I was literally dressed for church. And I don't know where I'd just come from. I can't remember where I came from. But I remember I had on my clergy clothes. And was at the um, bamboo shack on on Blue Hill Road by Subway, BEC. I don't know if any bamboo shack's still there now, but that's where it was then. And I remember um, the girl cussed me out. I mean, carried on bad, my eye tear open. And I look around me to see who she could have been talking to because I was lost. And so when I was turning around looking like this, she said, what are you turning for, Lily Mabel? What are you turning around for? I am talking to you. And I'm shocked. And I'm like, is your head any good? What are you talking about? And so she said, when I was in school, you used to tease me every day about the way I look. And I said, what? And then she said, yes, yes. You teased me and you taught me and you told me I was ugly. And I said, I did what? And she went on and she went on. And I felt worse and worse and worse and worse. And then I said, I am so sorry. No matter what I said to her, it didn't take her pain away. She had a layers, and it didn't take the damage, which she said I did to her, away. And now I'm at a hard place because I don't remember the situation at all. The people that she said was there, I know all of them. Even after the fact, I ended up calling some of them to find out if they remember any of this, but... Nevertheless, I still wanted to make amends for it because one thing I've learned is that as a leader or as a Christian, you shouldn't stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but delight yourself in the things and the ways of the Lord. And I was sitting there just judging myself saying, God, look at what I've done. Oh my God, I've ruined this girl's life. This girl still can't run a pen. We done been at a school almost 20, 30 years. And now, back then it was 19. I said, we done been at a school 19 years and this girl still battling with this. And listen, the line, she was holding up the line. We were both holding up the line. And it was just so catastrophic that I was like, the woman said, what you want? I didn't even want to order my food, but I was riding with my sister. And I told a lady what I want. I paid for it. And I tried to still talk to this girl. And I said to her, what can I do to fix it? Because I am really sorry. And I'm shaking and I'm tearing up because I think of how catastrophic her life was affected.
by some awful thing that I had done when I was a child, when I was a teenager. And it was horrible. God, she, she started going into it and she was working herself. And I was like, I'm trying to reach out to her to touch her. She said, don't you touch me. And I was like, okay, I don't want to touch. I'm not going to touch you. I just trying to figure out how to figure. I'm sorry. And I kept saying, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's the past. That's the old me. I, um, I, I should not have done any of that. Who am I to judge you? You know, and then I started talking to her and talking to her like anyone who has the love of God would or should. And no matter what I said, she said, well, I'm not going to forgive you. I said, okay. All right. And she said, because I will never forget what you did to me. And I said, I'm so sorry I affected you like that. I walked all the way to, I followed her all the way to her car, which was not, you know, the bamboo shack ain't got that much parking, y'all. Y'all know you'll be parking right next to each other and on even double parking if necessary, if the line long. But unbeknown to me, there was a Rasta man sitting on the wall there by that bamboo shack. There was a pastor, Chadwick James, I think was his name, um, who was also in the line. I'd never met him before. I didn't know who he was. I shouldn't say pastor. I should say bishop because I think I do remember him being a bishop. And I didn't know who he was. Um, I didn't know. I didn't know who he was. But I remember she pulled off. My number still hadn't called yet. And I was sitting in the car, I went to my sister's car and I was just thumping, you know, like doing my hair, just thinking about the whole encounter. And they called my number, so I got back up at the car. And there's this man of God, he has this cross on him, wooden cross, but he has on his purple clergy, um, clergy collar. And he stops me and he, he said, I watched the whole thing play it out. He said, I thought it was, I, I don't know who you are. He asked me what my name was. I asked him what his name was afterwards. And I remember the name because it stood out, the event stood out. And um, I remember I had felt so awful, awful. Because I was like, how could I do something? Um, I just could not phantom. But the Rasta man watching said these words to me. He said, miss. I said, yes, sir. He said, where are churches? I said, it's upstairs, Mackey Street. He said, miss, I could be a member of your church. I said, what? He said, yeah. Because boy, that took some humility watching you plead with her. And you was just trying to make amends on every count of the word, and you never didn't own up to what, you, what, what she said you did, even though you don't remember it. You could have said, I just don't remember it. And then I just this attitude and just go on. But he said, but your humility. That, that, that did something for me this morning. And he said, I come into your church. Can I tell you that man did come to my church? He did become a member of my church. And I remember when I was walking back to my car, because even though he said that, still wasn't. I still didn't feel good. I still felt horrible. And I remember the bishop prayed with me and gave me some encouraging words. So that lifted some of that off of me. But when I sat that back down in my car, my sister talked to me. And she's like, boy. And anybody who knows my sister can tell you, if you right, you right. And if you wrong, you will know you are wrong. She's not going to take sides. Never. Not even for no family. She's really just going to tell you like it is. And she said to me, oh, God. And now you all know my nickname. She said, "Um, you at least try to make it right. You have to, you have to, um, Except the fact that you tried. I said, I don't even know how to find her. I don't even remember her name. I get in my yearbook when I go home. I'm going to go dig up the yearbook and I'm going to go find her. And I did find her and I did find her name. And then I started calling people who I know. 
Let me just to see how I could still make this up. And two months later, I was just looking at the TV and ZNS would um, put the obituary on notifications of death on the TV. Those of you that are not in the Bahamas won't know what I'm talking about. But those of you that are in the Bahamas knows that when the TV signs off and you just turn on the TV in the day, um, our TV used to come on, I think, 5 o'clock every day. You had a national anthem, or was it 3? I know Sesame Street was the first thing that came on, but I can't remember the time, but I think it's 5. But anyway, when our TV would come on, we would sign on with the national anthem, and it would sign off with the national anthem. But during the day, they would have um, announcements, church announcements. They would put up their death announcements, death notices. That's what they call it. Um, like if there's a fair, someone having a stakeout, stuff like that. All them things would be up there. And then um, the obituary thing would come on, like, you know, we'll, 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 we'll funeral services for this person, all this little stuff. And I was just sitting there, just, 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 I just glanced up and I was writing something and then I just glanced up and I was just looking at the thing because I was just in a daze. My mind was not on this young lady or anything else. And there she was on the television screen in my stomach. Oh, my stomach just, I was just so blown, I was just so broken. I was like, oh my God, she dies. I, that meant I could never, ever, ever get the help her peel the layers, get her, get her healed. And so I said, I won't make that mistake again. That happened before I became Prophetess Lily. But one thing I do know, whichever way my ministry could impact lives, I'm all for it. But it's got to be all God. Because that's my source. God has always been my source. And so I can't sway to the left for friend, for family. My friends and my family will tell you that. And if those people would have been in my life 20, 30, and from birth to now, don't get to sway me. You should know me. I shun up angle and no devil or nobody else come into my life and do it. But layers are easy to put on. Oh, Lord, layers are easy to put on. But they're very hard, as you can see. Look at this. They're very hard to pull off. And this me just really pulling it. See how much this me really pulling it? You need a knife to get to some of these layers in this onion. Because look at how thick, look at how, look at how difficult it is. I want you to get an onion and try it for yourself. It sticks right to the skin. And that is what pain will do. Disappointment will do. Hmm? Brokenness will do. Of course, you put on layers of protection, layers of all these different things. Look at that, that peeling off. You see that? Look. What's your layer? Because God wants to see this. You know why he wants this? Because his son already died on the cross for you. By his stripes, you already healed. Every sickness and disease, you don't need no covering now. Hmm? The Bible says he in heaven, and he's making intercession for us. You don't need the layers. Take them off. Get delivered. Trust God. Pursue the things of God. This is yours truly. Prophetess Lily inviting you, if you haven't already done so, follow us. Join us in the Prophetic Encounter Group. Or better yet, 
Join us every Friday night on the free conference call. I want to encourage you. This ain't no time to put on layers. This is the time now to be real, real transparent. Show who you really are. I dare you. God bless you is my prayer.